Hello everybody, my name is M. Welcome to my channel. Alright, so this is new. I'm updating a bit faster than I usually do, but here we are anyway. It is one week since my last update. We're back with another installment of M Cooks Her Way through her 115 cookbooks. This week, we have one of my favourite cookbooks ever because it is so cute and mod and minimalistic. It's called Egg by Blanche Vaughan. So I found this book maybe about 3 or 4 years ago at the Big Bad Wolf sale, which is basically where I get most of my cookbooks. It's got this really cute mod cover, which I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I totally did here. And I'm very fond of it because the inside has some great recipes. And technically, I've already cooked from this book multiple times because there is a recipe for honey madelines which I use quite frequently here. I have a thing for madelines, like they're delicious, I love them. I frequently make them as I'm very sorry here, have my apology gifts, or to bribe people in the office depending on what I need from them. So because I didn't want to cook something that I had already cooked, this time around I decided to make a whole bunch of sandwiches. I'm not really shitting you, I wish I were but I'm on this kick to eat healthier and I think sandwiches are a great way to eat healthy. So I made a soft boiled egg with anchovy toast except less soft boiled because I overcooked my egg, surprise. And then I made a egg in a nest with za'atar and paprika. I know y'all don't need me to teach you how to make eggs in a basket or soft boiled eggs though. Maybe I'm not really the best person to teach you how to make soft boiled eggs after all. Whatever the case, I made those two things and then I I made drop scones, which look amazing, but technically they're like they, they look more like um, pancakes to me. So I made them like pancakes, and they were really amazing. So these are really good, and I would recommend that we make these again. The last thing that I made is a sort of an open face sandwich. It's basically kale and treats. So on toast with a poached egg. I didn't, I couldn't find kale, so I substituted it with watercress, which does the job just as well. And I think it's very, very tasty. And you could just as easily eat all these at any time, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whichever one goes. So let's see how it went. So we're going to start off with the batter for the drop scones. Crack one egg into bowl of choice. You'll need to separate the white and the yolk later. And you can use your hands as long as you wash them first. Now sift together 60 grams of all-purpose flour and half a tablespoon of baking powder. You'll notice I'm making the batter directly in the measuring cup because pouring is easier than scooping and I'm all for that. About one tablespoon of honey goes into the flour along with the egg yolk and one tablespoon of pot-set vanilla yogurt. And you're not really supposed to fork it together before adding the milk, but I got trigger happy and my hand moved before my brain did. Don't worry though, the batter is supposed to sit in the fridge for 30 minutes and in that time, the flour will absorb all the milk and get nice and hydrated. See, it's already looking better. Next up, we're going to move on with the anchovy toast, which starts off with some really great artisanal bread. This one has lots of nuts and seeds. I'm cutting off some nice thick slices for all my toasting needs, and you'll see that I have a lot of toasting needs for this particular episode. Next up, we're going to make the anchovy butter, which clearly starts off with some anchovy, as well as some of the oil that comes with the anchovy. So you're basically just going to grind it all up in your mortar and pestle. It's really easy, just... And then we're going to add some lemon juice to tart it up. And this makes for a really great pasta sauce as well. It's the base for pasta puttanesca, which is very delicious. 
So you continue to mix that up and afterwards you're going to add in some butter though in retrospect I don't think the butter is really necessary here now we're gonna set that aside while we move on to our soft boiled egg the instructions are to put a room temperature egg into a pot of boiling water and then you're going to immediately turn it down and let it simmer gently for the next four minutes now obviously I did something wrong here because my egg turned out somewhere between hard and soft boiled. Whatever, however that goes, you're going to make your toast next. And you can use a toaster but I prefer to melt some butter in a pan and cook my toast over the stove. So now that the egg is done, you're going to want to immediately rescue it as well as your toast from the fire. Spread your anchovy butter over your toast. Yes, more butter, I know. And then you're going to slice it up. The idea is to get thick soldiers that you can use to dip into your egg. And I promise you this is really really good. And you should definitely give it a try. Now, eggs in the basket aren't a novelty by any measure, but they're really satisfying and delicious. And the recipe in this book uses zeta and paprika to liven it up. And I just thought to myself, I really gotta try that. And as fate would have it, I have both zeta and paprika in the house, so easy. You start off by cutting a hole into your bread with whatever you have on hand. As you can see, I used a measuring spoon. So essentially what you're going to do now is cook the bread with butter over a stove and make sure both sides are cooked and the egg goes into the hole. It doesn't matter if the white spread out a bit. This is meant to be good, tasty, messy but really wholesome. You're going to cover it and cook it for about a minute. Once it's cooked, add your paprika and zeta, salt and pepper as desired. Now you see, that is a perfect yolk. Mm. Next, we're going to get back to our drop scones. So we're going to whisk up the egg white from before until soft peaks form. It won't take too long considering it's just the one egg. Once that's done, we're going to retrieve our batter from the fridge. And then gently fold the whites into it. I wouldn't worry too much about deflating the whites. The idea is to go slow and steady. And remember that you are meant to be enjoying yourself, not screaming in panic. To cook the drop scones, you'll need to butter your pan. Be careful not to let it burn. And then carefully pour the batter in. And cook until little bubbles appear on the surface before flipping. You're going to cook this side for maybe about an extra minute. 
and then plate up. Serve with some more of your vanilla yogurt and whatever fresh fruit you have on hand. I find berries are a very great idea. Feel free to change up the options however you'd, however you'd like. Finish with a light dusting of icing sugar and a drizzle of honey. Now on to our last egg dish of the day. This one is a poached egg on kale with treats, so I'm using watercress instead, but it's just as good, I promise. You're going to start by slicing up half a chili and a fat clove of garlic. And then you're going to toast some cumin seeds and grind them to a powder. You want to do this so you don't end up biting into stray whole seeds. And that's not fun. Alright, now you're ready to get cooking. Stir fry your chili and garlic in some olive oil. And then you're going to add your chorizo to get it to brown a bit. You don't have to use slices, you can just use the sausage. I have slices in the freezer so I'm just using them. Add your watercress, you don't want to overcook your greens but basically you just want to get it to wilt a little. So use your stir fry to top your toast and be sure to get lots of treats on because that is full of flavor and it's so good. Once that's ready, you can get poaching. This is the Nigella Lawson method of poaching. Basically, you're supposed to crack your egg into a strainer over a bowl and this will allow all the runny whites to drip into the bowl and then you're going to add in some vinegar to tighten the white proteins a bit. Afterwards you're going to pour your egg into a swirling vortex of simmering water and cook until all the whites have firmed up. If your egg is fresh, this should go wonderfully. And you're going to place, place your egg on your toast and sprinkle with your cumin. And we are absolutely good to go. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. So I think it's really, really important to know your way around the egg. My knowledge of the egg, at the point where I bought this book, I wasn't really, really good at poaching eggs yet. So having something like this in my library actually helps me to remember that some things you actually do need to practice, like poaching eggs or boiling them, soft boiling them. I'm terrible at soft boiled eggs, okay? And possibly the one takeaway from this that I would have is buy a timer. You, you really, really need a timer. Timers are good. I'm talking really slowly because I got a paper cut and my finger hurts. <laughs> Ideally, you're going to want to make all these recipes right before eating them, with the sole exception of the pancakes, which I think you can keep them warm for maybe about an hour or so while your family wakes up or if you're making them for yourself, you could just as easily cover them with a moist paper towel afterwards and then reheat it in the microwave. There you go, dinner. I use the combination of honeydew and blueberries. Uh, you will find that whatever fruit works well with them, I mean, whatever's in season, whatever you can find in the marketplace is great. And the... Ow, my paper cut really hurts. <laughs> and the yogurt that I use is actually uh, vanilla flavored yogurt. So you could use whatever flavor you you want. Uh, I assume lemon would work really well with this. If you don't want to use flavored yogurt, you could just grate in some lemon zest or add in your own vanilla paste. Whatever the case, it's easy, it's fun, it's wholesome, and it goes right well 
with my cardigan here, which I'm donning because it is raining and it is cardigan season and Taylor Swift's new album is out and I gotta listen to it. I hope you all enjoyed this exciting adventure. If you had fun, if you think you learned something, please subscribe to this channel, please share, please click on the little bell button so you know exactly when I update. Let me know in the comments below what you would like me to cook from. The link to all my other cookbooks is in the description of this video. Great, so I'll see you all next time. I'm gonna go take care of this paper cut now. Bye!